Hello golfers, this is part two of my Sergio Garcia swing analysis. The intent is to show the commonalities in the professional golfers torso movements. So while their arms and torso movements might be very different during the backswing, research shows that during the downswing, their weight shift patterns and their aggressive and powerful pelvis before thorax torso rotation have very similar patterns. And this rotation is the cause of both their greatest triumphs and their inconsistencies. The pros have far greater downswing pelvic rotation than less skilled golfers do. They achieve this mainly by aggressively firing their trail side gluteal muscles. That is where their tremendous speed comes from. However, this is the movement that can, under pressure, cause the two-way miss that many pros unexpectedly get. When the pelvis rotates excessively, the thorax, which we know is tightly coupled to pelvic motion, rotates open too. As I mentioned in the last post, a slightly extra retraction of the lead shoulder blade can cause the lead forearm to roll under and cause the club face to close. Conversely, if sufficient weight shift does not take place before the excessive pelvic rotation, the golfer might hang back slightly and have a slight slice. What would happen if the golfer tends to come slightly over the top as seen here? I define over the top as the trail shoulder being on top of or in front of the trail toe at impact, but the club head here appears to be arriving slightly from the outside too. Because of their quick aggressive torso movements, by the time the club shaft is horizontal in the downswing, the hands arrive directly above the ball and often with considerable wrist lag. As you can see here, the trail elbow and both wrists have to be straightened literally before the arms can move much further forward. So how much wrist lag is too much? The issue with the lag is not only that the wrists have to go through a huge range of motion in very little time because the hands are already on top of the ball, but also that the trail wrist extension or bending backwards causes the trail forearm to be slightly more pronated, which in turn prevents a smooth straightening of the trail elbow close to impact. Once again, a torso-based solution with the arms not acting independently would be useful. How about if the trail shoulder were to be further back from the target line at club shaft horizontal, resulting in the hands not being directly on top of the ball and the wrists having much less intentional lag. The trail forearm would then be rolled under or supinated and it would have time to straighten gradually and moreover in the plane in which it is designed to straighten, that is the sagittal plane. When the trail elbow is unable to straighten smoothly because it is in the plane of its design, it impedes the smooth movements of the wrist. It is important, as many researchers indicate, for the torso to act like the handle of a bullwhip and make the main movements of the swing. The arms, acting more like the thong of the bullwhip, should move in reaction to and in sync with torso movements. It is essential for any golfer who wishes to avoid the two-way miss to have a more natural torso rotation of the oblique muscles of the core rather than a forced one of the trail side gluteal muscles. It is also essential to have a top of backswing position from which the thorax or upper torso does not move down and forward aggressively. That would allow the arms and hands time and space within which the trail elbow and wrist can straighten correctly for impact.